All right, wonderful. Well, my name is Tom Metzger. I'm a managing director with Wells Fargo. And before I kick off this evening, I'd like to introduce a very, very special guest. And if anyone has been to a Shelter from the Storm event, it is no stranger. This is perhaps the most poised 10-year-old girl you will ever meet in your life, the amazing Leutu. Come on up, Leutu. And give her a big round of applause. Leutu is going to be leading us in the national anthem. So everybody, please put your hands over your hearts. And Leutu, all yours. Oh, you're singing. What did I say? Not national anthem. It's the Pledge of Allegiance, but equally as important. You all went to grade school. You know how it goes. All right, there you go. Please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So if anybody wanted to know why I actually requested a song from her, I was actually trying to trick her. She sang last year for the event, and there was not, there literally was not a dry eye in the entire, I would say in the building, but we are outside. But Leiu Tui did an awesome job. Thank you, and uh, we look forward to next year. Well, um, as I said, my name is Tom Metzger, and good evening. And how fun is it to be finally together for an event? Let's give ourselves a round of applause. It is wonderful to see everybody in person. And our goal this evening is to inspire you about the important and life-saving work that takes place every day here at Volunteers of America, or VOA. As I said, my name is Tom Metzger, and I'm with Wells Fargo. And I'm honored to be a friend and advocate for VOA. I've come to deeply respect the staff at VOA and the board members for their passion and commitment. I've served on the Development and Communications Committee for the past year, and I'm honored to be nominated for the Volunteers of America Board of Directors. VOA doesn't just house those struggling with homelessness, so they are out of sight. Each person they meet is treated with love and dignity. Every child, man, and woman is surrounded with the belief that they will achieve more than anyone else thought possible. Tonight, whether you're one of our 20 ambassadors or a returning guest, a multi-year Shelter from the Storm Society member, a donor at another level, or new to Volunteers of America altogether, we and I am so grateful that you are here with us this evening. Now, as a Wells Fargo team member, I'm also proud to let you know that this evening, we will be matching all new society level gifts up to $100,000. It's a proud moment for me, and um, tonight your efforts will be doubly impacted. And I'm proud to be part of a company and a, um, and a corporation that takes seriously the, the focus of the local community. So, um, Karin, thank you. And uh, a lot of team members up here from Wells Fargo as well. So give them a round of applause for making an effort. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to thank and highlight our sponsors this evening who have covered all the costs so that 100% of what is raved, raised tonight goes towards life-changing work. Thank you to SMUD, represented by board members Heidi Sanborn and Greg Fishman. VOA board members Deborah and John Bovin, Steve and Kay Green. Thank you Mike Belote, Ampac Fine Chemicals, Safe Credit Union, represented by Amanda Mers and County Supervisor Sue Frost. A huge thanks goes out to our band this evening, Beat Salad, led by em <laughs> that one's fun to say, uh, led by Emeritus board member Kent Lassen and our friend Lori and Emerald City Flowers for the beautiful contribution. Thank you, Drink Wines, for the special treat, and our host, the Esch family. At this time, please help me, uh, please join me as we welcome all the elected officials that have joined us here this evening. And I actually get instructions now, please hold your applause until the end. City of Sacramento Council Member 
Katie Valenzuela, and her staff member, Skylar uh, Michelle Evleth, City of Sacramento Council member, Mai Vang, Sacramento Board member, uh, Sacramento County Board of Supervisors, Sue Frost, Rich Desmond, and Don Natoli, Chief of Staff, District 5, Rebecca Sloan, SMUD Board member, Heidi Sanborn, Elk Grove City Council member, Dara Swain, Elk Grove Mayor, Bobby Singh, City of Sacramento Council member, Rick Jennings, and Cassandra Jennings. Lastly, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here and showing your support for those in our community who are working their way out of homelessness. Tonight you will hear stories of transformation, and I know that you will leave here filled with hope for our community. Next, I would like to introduce Anna Cornelius, who is the program supervisor at the VOA Family Shelter. She truly embodies VOA's mission of love and acceptance and is known locally here as Mama Anna. Please help me welcome Mama Anna. Good evening. It's a blessing to see you all here. My name is Anna Cornelius, and I am the program supervisor for Volunteers of America's Family Shelter here in Sacramento. I've been with Volunteers of America for 12 years, and I'm here tonight to share a little, to support a lot, and possibly be a glimmer of hope for someone who needs it. Growing up, I experienced all types of abuse, verbal, mental, emotional, physical, and eventually it led to drug addiction and homelessness. I experienced incredible pain throughout my life, so being here tonight is a miracle. Thanks to individuals like you who mentored me, who came alongside me, today I get to live my dream of helping others. I can never get, forget where I've been because I'm doomed to repeat it. I share my story every time I get a chance because it may save someone's life or give them just a glimpse to save their own. In a few weeks, I will be going through commissioning process to become a Volunteers of America Commission Minister. <laughs> and in honor of that, I wrote this prayer to start us off tonight. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are all gathered here for one purpose, a cause that is so great it takes many to band together and address. We are here tonight with compassion, hope, and understanding that together we can make a change. Father God, we ask for your strength to continue this journey as long as it's needed. Teach us to give generously because the need is bigger than us. Whether it's giving money, clothing, housing, or just our time, please give us the gift to know our place in this journey so that all might find shelter from the storm. Father God, we come to you asking that you please be with those that are homeless and struggling in all capacities. Please wrap your loving arms around them and give them warmth, guidance, and peace. Provide them the opportunities to live a better life. Allow us to work together as your hands and feet. Show us our path and duties for humanity and supply us with the strength to be the change our community needs. Allow us to be the light in the dark for those in need so that they may see the glimmer of hope. Father God, please show each individual, individual their mess will soon be their message and their test will soon be their testimony. May all of us know and feel without a doubt that we are loved. Amen. Thank you. At this time, I would like to welcome up our wonderful leader, President and CEO, Leo McFarlane. Thank you, Anna. That was beautiful. I haven't gotten the chance to say hello to everybody yet tonight, just some of you. I'm so pleased to see so many wonderful, friendly faces that I've known for so many, many years. 
I wanted to, one of the things I wanted to do is really point out Don Natoli for just a minute. Um, Don Natoli has served this community for many, 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 many years. He has been a terrific supporter of Volunteers of America, particularly the work we, we do in the community and, Mather, and historically out of Mather Air Force Base. Don, I know you're going to be ter terming out eventually, and you, you're, you're going to leave a tremendous hole in, in our community. And we just want to let you know how much we appreciate all the support you've ever given us, all the love you've ever shown. You are much loved by all of us. So thank you, Don. So tonight we're, we're excited to share some time with you. We know that tonight you will leave um, affected by what you're going to hear because I've heard a couple of these speeches and they made me, it made me cry. So I know that I'm not going to get in the way of any of that tonight. I'm going to try to be as, as short and succinct as I can so that you really hear from the wonderful stories of, of people who've been touched by the work and support that you all have done over the years. As, as it was said, I'm Leo McFarland, President and CEO for Volunteers of America, Northern California and Northern Nevada. It's a big operation, more than 40 programs servicing the p folks that are experiencing homelessness, drug addiction, mental illness, um, senior citizens needing affordable support and housing. We're doing all of that. We're doing it with around nearly 400 employees across the board. And I just want to be, again, let you know that, that this has been a most exciting, couple of years, pandemic years, to deal what, to do what we, we've done for the past couple of years. But before you talk about that, I want to thank Wells Fargo Bank again for the terrific support. Uh, Wells Fargo for, for all you've done. Tom, Karen Woodruff, the whole team. I'm wearing my Wells Fargo pin. <laughs> Just so happens when I went away to college back in 1972, I had to open up a bank account at Wells Fargo Bank. I shared that story a couple of Christmases ago. And uh, one of your team leaders, one of your leaders gave me this pin. So I've, I've been a customer ever since 1972 and appreciate all the support you've given us and Volunteers, Volunteers America and myself. So thank you guys all. So we've been, we feel blessed to have been serving our community, the Sacramento community, for over 110 years. Uh, but this, these last couple of years with the pandemic, it's been very, very difficult. You can imagine trying, trying to run shelter programs where um, you, you, you had lockdowns, you had staff who were getting sick, and uh, it, we, we tucked through it. And I wanna just tell you that the, the staff of Volunteers of America, there's a cutie, the staff of Volunteers of America just really stepped up and sacrificed and worked extra long hours. So I just wanna make sure that, that you appreciate the fact that people in the trenches, doing the work on a day-to-day -day basis, really worked their tails off during these past two years. We came out of it, and not only did we come out of it, we came out of it with some new and innovative programs. I'll tell you about one of those right now. Um, the X Street Navigation Center, which is located right near Cassandra Jennings' office, is a new, since the fall, 100-bed shelter, sprung tent design for 100 men and women. This is the second such shelter. And I want to give a props to my uh, chief operating officer, Amani Sawiris Rapaski, who has been shepherding both the Meadowview Navigation Center and, and the X Street Navigation Center that is, in, that is serving uh, those populations. It's one of the big efforts that the city has made. We do this work in contract with Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Agency and the city of Sacramento for both of those programs. And we couldn't do it without their support and the support of those businesses that are, that are affected by homelessness in their neighborhoods. So we're working very hard, and I know that uh, just the, the uh, um, X Street Navigation Center just in the last few months has moved at least 40 men and women out of the shelter into permanent housing. So that flow out is happening, and people are being served and taken care of. We're giving them terrific support in the sort of practices and the services we, we deliver for them. And I'll give you an example of two, two of the fellows right now. Um, Lonnie, Lonnie is working two part-time jobs. He's homeless, he can't afford rent anywhere. We will get him housed, that's no problem. But he's so industrious, he's working two part-time jobs. And when he's not working those two part-time jobs, he's volunteering at the shelter services. He's, he's mopping bathrooms, he's cleaning out garbage cans, he's picking up trash. He just wants to work, 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 work. He will be a success. We will move him out of the homeless situation. 
into housing. He's a great guy. And then there's Dwight. Dwight, who was, as we're told, was the last person drafted into the Vietnam War. He served, since then, he's been homeless, dealing with uh, the trauma, moral injury associated with what, what he, he went through in Vietnam. And uh, I'm pleased to say just two weeks ago, he was able to move out of the shelter program and into permanent housing. So again, another success story. And again, for all of our city council members and our board of supervisors, these investments you're making, the return on investment is happening. We may not see it as clearly as we'd want to see it. We're still driving down the street, seeing the, the homeless situation with people living on the sidewalks, but people are being helped and are being moved on because of your investment. So thank you so very, very much. Um, oh, another program that we're just so excited about is recently we were awarded a contract for our second senior safe house program. We're gonna add an another site this includes 14, 15, 15 uh, bedrooms that's going to happen out off of Brad, Brad, Branch Center Road. We've been operating for the last 10 years the first senior safe house west of the Mississippi in Sacramento, and that, that typically houses six individuals at a time, sometimes eight. Um, don't tell anybody, but <laughs> none, nonetheless, it, it does. Sometimes couples show up, and we need to make sure we can keep them together. But we've moved over 200 uh, abused, neglected seniors through that program over those 10 years. So we're very excited about, about mid-year next year. We will be opening, cutting the ribbon. Don, I hope you'll be there uh, for that 15-bed uh, senior safe house. I've got, and I've, I've got a, one of my cousins here who worked in the senior uh, services for the county for many, many years, Eileen. Uh, I hope you're going to be there at the ribbon cut, cutting as well because this is what you've put your life work into and uh, you're seeing it sort of the fruit of that effort uh, come to pass. And again, these are seniors who are abused and neglected um, either financially, emotionally, or physically, typically by their own family members. And, they, and they, it, Adult Protective Services engages with them, and Adult Protective Services need some place to, to house them. And this is what we've been doing for many, many years, and we're going to expand that. So we're very, very excited about that. A third program that we're kind of really excited about is the fact that the uh, Veterans Administration has uh, very much appreciated the work we've been doing with veterans, particularly out at the Mather Air Force Base, where we've been housing 40 uh, homeless veterans and providing them with the support services they need to get their health conditions taken care of, as well as um, all the resources they need to move from homelessness into housing. Well, the v Veterans Administration just doubled that contract, so we're now going to be serving 80 veterans at a time uh, going forward. And uh, it's a real challenge. But we also want to thank SMUD, who has been a real supporter of this particular program, bringing all sorts of assets to bear for that, that veteran population. And one of the things they just did was provided us with a brand new electric golf cart. So, well, we, here's what we do with that. We don't play golf. <laughs> I'll give them the chance. We might figure something out, but we, a, a lot of our veterans are disabled. And there is a VA hospital out there. So that golf cart means we can transport them over to the hospital for appointments, we can transport them for the meal services, we can move them around the campus where they can get the services they need. So that golf cart really does come in very handy, so thank you so very much for that terrific support. We're thrilled about it. So I'm just going to touch on those three programs, and um, you're going to hear from uh, two testimonials today. One is from um, Michelle and one from Melanie. They're the ones that can show you how miracles are happening every day. Once you hear their stories and realize that the sort of support that we as a community give to this effort uh, really does make a difference in their lives. Last year and every year, we always talk about the funding gap that we start out the year with. And it's grown because of the expanding programs. It's grown to $2.4 million. The gap between what the government might give us for some of our contracts and what we really need to complete that contract, meaning the added benefits. So if you spread that $2.4 million shortfall across 40 plus programs, um, it becomes a significant number. But we work all year long. Our development office works all year long. And right now, we're very close to being at our goal. We're, we're just still $700,000 short, 
but we have till June to raise that. So hopefully tonight we can make a dent in that, uh, maybe even a big dent with, with your presence and your support. But that's really where we stand every year because we want to make sure we bring added benefits to our services. We want to make sure people are getting the training they need, the resume writing they need, the birthday parties we do on a monthly basis at our family shelter for all the children who are experiencing a birthday that month. So many businesses and communities have stepped forward to make sure they're a part of that wonderful program. And some of you in this room do that and have been doing that for many, many years. And I'm just so, uh, so grateful for that. The, uh, essentially, this is how we do what we do. We do it with all of you. All of you are making a difference. I'm not going to have much more to add here, except we have a video that we want to show you right now that doesn't touch on necessarily the individuals we serve, but it touches on the incredible group of people who work in our 40 plus programs on a day to day basis and why they do what they do. So this is featuring the wonderful people, individuals who work for Volunteers of America. And I've been doing this for more than 40 years and I've never been so impressed with the quality and the dedication of those people that you're gonna to meet tonight. So here's just a sampling of those individuals. Thank you. We often hear so much of the negatives associated with homelessness, how people look down on those they see on the streets. People walk to the other side of the sidewalk to not have to walk by someone's tent. Or they roll up their window to not have to speak to somebody who's asking for money at an intersection. But there is a group of people who don't turn the other way. There is a subset of people who are making themselves available. They are willing to be on the front lines to help those in need. Those people are Volunteers of America employees. I wanted to give back. I was homeless for eight years on the streets of Reno for the last three of my homelessness. Um, and the community really reached out and supported me through becoming successful. So I wanted to give back and be able to support and love on somebody like it took for somebody to do with me. Truly why I choose to come to work and why I love to come to work is to just have meaningful interactions with other individuals and that is what drives me. So I choose to come here every day in hope that I can at least make a difference in one person's life. I, I love helping people, you know, I just enjoy being able to learn from everybody and there's so many different walks of lives and so many stories that these people have and when they share them with you it's, it's really an honor. I used drugs for 21 years, which is a long time, and then I became an alcoholic. So I get it. I get where they are. I get where they're coming from. For me to share with them that you can come out of it is, is, is important. So if I can do it, they can do it. Those touching moments are what keeps us going. Making the client smile. Just if I can make them smile, that's my whole goal in life is to make one person smile every day, and I've managed to do that every day for the past year and a half working here. It seems like they're this family. That just melt my heart to know that I can interact with them, share good stuff with them and positive thoughts, and allow them to go out there and do much better. Seeing, I mean, and it doesn't take anything to see the level of hurt and pain that a lot of people in this population carry around with. Um, I would say I've seen more trauma impacting people in this population than in any other population I've ever seen and so that for me it, it just really softens my heart and breaks my heart for them. They need love, they need support, they, they need it all and not enough people are doing it. To me Volunteers in America is a second chance. It's about supporting anyone where they are at no matter the circumstance. The OA means hope to me, for me, for these people. I mean, I, I get as much from it as they do. Community, family, it's, it's help, it's uh, a guiding hand, it's support, um, it means a lot. The OA, to me, means home. 
means home. Feel hey means to me family, love, support, hope. VOA means to me, VOA is a, a source of hope. And um, when people have hope, they can continue to press on through the most difficult times. So I feel like I'm home. Good evening. My name is Melanie Finch. And I'm here tonight because of people like those you saw in the video and the people like you that believed in me. Several years ago, my husband and I were getting by just fine. We were renting a room through a friend and we were feeling good about life. Unfortunately, we found out that the money we were contributing for rent was not being paid to the landlord and we lost our housing. Without anywhere else to go, we ended up on the streets. When we became homeless, my husband and I were sober. We had our little boy, Carrie, who we knew we didn't want to put in that environment. So we made the heartbreaking decision to leave him with someone we trusted. Our plan was to find a new place quickly to be together as a family again. Living on the streets is rough, and all you want to do is escape the miserable feeling. That escape came with its own misery and the shape of addiction to various substances. There is so much judgment and misconception about why people become homeless. For us, it was an addiction, but that came afterwards. The trauma we experienced was more than we could bear at times. One day, our tent caught on fire, we got beat up, and we were even flooded once by Steelhead Creek. The stress of all these events pushed us deeper into the arms of addiction. It was our only escape. Our first interaction with VOA was the triage shelter. We came into the program just looking for warmth and a few meals. But we honestly were not ready to change our lives. If you ask any of the VOA staff at that time, we were the problem clients. We didn't want to listen, we didn't follow the rules, and eventually we ended up back on the river. It was January of 2020, when we decided, or when we heard about the shelter at Capitol Park, that we decided to give it another try. We weren't even aware that it was run by VOA at the time, but when we walked in, we were greeted by familiar faces. I am sure those employees hated seeing us again. <laughs> Knowing that we were such problem clients. They didn't show us though, and welcomed us with open arms. What I didn't know when I walked in was that I was pregnant with my precious daughter. The employees encouraged me to get a pregnancy test, and when we found out that I was actually pregnant, they went out of their way to make sure I was taken care of, giving me extra food and comfort to stay healthy. Our case manager was very concerned about the baby and offered my husband a recovery program. That's when I decided we both needed help. I entered a 90-day program in the middle of my pregnancy. And when it ended, my beautiful daughter, Clarissa, was born. A few weeks later, our family was offered a space at VOA's Transitional Living Program. We continued to work through our recovery process and started working on getting our son back. During this time, our son was still living with the family we entrusted him with. Unfortunately, it turned into a bad situation. The staff at VOA helped us go through all the paperwork and process to find our son and eventually bring him home with us. Our family of four was finally reunited. My husband found a great job and we were able to graduate the family transitional program. And now we are living in our own apartment. I can't tell you what it means to have both of our kids under one roof. They are both healthy and thriving, and none of, it would, none of it would be possible without your continued to support VOA. When we first graduated from the Transitional Living Program, I was working as a waitress. I had inconsistent hours, I was working long nights, and it wasn't healthy for my family. Thankfully, VOA stepped in once more. I received a call from my old case manager, Steve saying that VOA is looking for staff 
and he wondered if I would be interested in coming back in a new role. It would be better pay and more consistent hours, allowing me to spend more time with my family. Of course, I said yes, and after the interview process was hired on at VOA. Today, I am proud to be able to give back to the programs that gave me so much. I know what clients are going through and how they are struggling with their addictions, because I did. I am able to listen to them and encourage them that change is possible if they follow the same steps. I wake up excited to go to work every morning knowing that I am making a difference in lives. I felt like I literally had nothing and VOA helped me gain everything. I felt I know that none of my journey would be possible without generous people like all of you who go above and beyond to make sure that we are loved and cared for. VOA helped me gain everything. They gave me the tools I needed to restore my marriage. They helped me get my son back. And they walked me through having a healthy pregnancy with my daughter. They welcomed us in when we didn't have anywhere to go. And now I am proud to give back. I am grateful for the ways that each of you has impacted my life, even without even knowing it. You brought me in from living on the streets with no hope to now being able to give back to my community. Thank you for believing in me, even when I couldn't. And now I want to introduce another amazing woman with another amazing story, Michelle Epstein. Hello, everyone, and thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Michelle Epting, and I am very nervous, so please, please bear with me. This is my first time. Um, I'm very happy to be here and to share my story with you. My story to me is big, um, but I hope that sharing my story will touch someone here tonight. We all have our victories and losses in life, and my family have had the same. Um, we have had the hardest times, but we're making it through. I'm originally from Mississippi. I came to California 10 years ago with my husband and four kids. Um, I came to be with my family, because I was, where I was at, I didn't have none. So I came to be with my sister, and unfortunately, it did not work out so well, and we found ourselves homeless. Sorry. We end up struggling more than we thought we would, and thankfully, though, we found a shelter, and we was able to get on housing assistance and find our own home. We lived there so happily for six years until... Um, my health took a turn, and I experienced a stroke that left me in a wheelchair. I went from being able to run and play with my family to not being able to walk at all. I felt lost. I felt like I lost my independence. My mental health got worse, and I was in a deep depression. Then, of course, COVID hit. <laughs> And my landlord decided he didn't want to take our housing voucher anymore, leaving us forced to leave. And we found ourselves homeless once again. My husband worked hard to take care of me and my kids, but we knew we needed the assistance to survive. For months, we lived in and out of hotels, on and off of friends and family's uh, couches, and then at our lowest in cars, in our car. Until we finally, finally got that call from the VOA 
that they had a bed in their shelter for us. When we came, though, to the VOA, we still struggled. Um, I suffer from mental illness as, as well as my children. And I just didn't want to put my kids through another shelter. I felt like I failed them. For the first several months, I stayed in my room. I didn't want to interact with anyone. Not VOA, not staff, no nobody. My kids did their online schooling and we stayed to ourselves most of the time. I'm sorry. But the pandemic actually made it easy to stay at home. It made it easy to not go nowhere. But thankfully, the VOA helped me to get a referral to get mental health help. I was so grateful for them for that because I don't know where I would have been. I'm so happy that Ms. Emma Cornelius <laughs> and the staff at the VOA didn't give up on me. And they fought for me when I couldn't even fight for myself. The encouragement changed everything for us. Eventually, we started feeling better. I started feeling better. I saw it in my kids. I saw it in myself. It was, my kids were more motivated to get through school because, you know, during COVID, they didn't want to do nothing. <laughs> but they did. They did it. They did a good job, though. But it also helped me to motivate myself to keep moving us forward into getting housing. I actually stopped smoking, which was pretty good. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and I really started to work with staff, and I was able to take care of my kids the best way I knew how. I was amazed about how the shelter loved my babies. I loved the way they did birthday parties for all the children at the VOA. I loved how they did Christmas parties for the kids and I couldn't do it for them. I hated to admit it as a mother, but I couldn't. They made sure that they had everything they needed for schooling, which I couldn't do either. They have helped us grow as a family. We're more tighter than we used to be. While we've been at the shelter, my oldest, my second to the oldest daughter, Destiny, actually graduated from high school. <sighs> <laughs> Thank you. And I just know, I have no doubt in all of my children that they would do wonderful in whatever they pursue. Sorry. I'm sorry. Just give me a second. But on December 15th, 2021, we had a family tragedy that devastated us. My main supporter, my husband, grew weak from his ongoing addiction in his heart. gave up. I'm sorry. He lost his fight to stay with us. I'm so sorry. It was one of the hardest times for me. Thank you. Thank you so much.
it would have been so easy for me to fall back into my depression. But I knew I couldn't. And the staff at the VOA was there to lift me up. They let me have my time to mourn. They didn't rush me. They organized a wonderful private Christmas party just for me and my kids to reflect and to be together, to process everything. They cried alongside us, which they didn't have to do. They also showed me that I can still find joy in the midst of my suffering. Miss Anna, she sat me down and she told me, don't you give up. She knew how much he loved me and my kids. With her support and strength, I knew I had to finish what we started to stabilize my kids for housing. I always taught my children to give thanks to where you've been and where you're going. Life has been difficult for us, but I know that's still good. The VOA community has shown me the importance to have a support system. I am thankful every day for the ways you, my community, have helped me and my kids continue to fight. Today, I am proud to say that my family and I are moving into our own home. <laughs> Thank you. We will have our own space again. My kids can lay their heads knowing that they are safe. I am so excited to give my kids the home they deserve. And none of it, none of it wouldn't have been possible without your support and kindness. Thank you for believing in me and my family and for your helping us through the most difficult times of our lives. We have made, you have made a big, big impact on me and my family, and we will never forget. Thank you, VOA, for giving us hope for a new beginning. Thank you. So I actually lobbied for the video to be shown after um, Michelle and Manley gave their, their testimony so I got some time to recover, but I, I lost that battle. Wow. What an amazing night we've had together tonight. Thank you, Melanie, and thank you, Michelle, for sharing your stories with us tonight. I know the courage and strength it takes to stand up here and be vulnerable because my wife, Jill, and I got to share our story 15 years ago. My name is Nick Hemphill. I'm currently serving as board chair for Volunteers of America. And I'm only here tonight because 20 years ago, Volunteers of America changed my life. Each year I come to this event is a reminder of how much my life has changed. And I'm so grateful for people like all of you who helped make that change possible. You see, I was living on the streets deep in my addiction when someone from Volunteers of America came and showed me a better way of life. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't, if it wasn't for them. <laughs> and I still can't believe I'm serving as board chair. <laughs> My stories and the stories you've heard tonight are only possible because each year with the support of people like you, Volunteers of America helps over 17,000 individuals. That's the impact that you make in our community. When I was at my lowest point, people like you and Volunteers of America reminded me that my life still mattered. You helped me to keep my marriage together, never judging me, but always helping me be supportive in the next step of my journey. 
And I'm proud to stand here alongside of people like Melanie and Michelle to show that the to say that the love that Volunteers of America and donors like you show changes lives. The staff and employees, who I call angels, gain the trust of men and women and families they serve and help to show them a possibility of a new way of life. That trust and encouragement is what makes Volunteers of America special. And I can tell you, by just by being here tonight, you're showing that same love and encouragement that the staff gives every day. I know that both you and I want to continue to help Volunteers of America change the lives of those who might be lost, alone, scared, or hurting. But helping people get back on their feet requires an ever-increasing supply of financial resources. Together, we've helped manage to help Volunteers of America close this funding gap before, and I believe we can do it again. This year, as Leo said, that funding gap is $2.4 million. That's the difference between what VOA receives from various government agencies and the actual cost of running successful programs. Before I tell you how you can give a gift today, I want to quickly share about the Shelter from the Storm Society, which I'm a proud member of. That's a group of donors that gives a minimum of $1,000 annually for five years. That's a commitment of only $83.33 a month, which some choose to do, or you can give $250 quarterly. And I'm thrilled to share that we have matching gifts to inspire you to become new society members. Or if you're already a society member like me, you can choose to increase your gift. Once again, our wonderful friends at Wells Fargo will match all new society members up to $100,000. Not only that, but thanks to donors like Rick and Debbie Aver, Gary and Nancy Fletcher, and other anonymous contributions, that amount has been rounded up to $150,000. Please join me in thanking all of them. Okay, now it's time for you to join in. We've created a special page on VOA's website to make it easy for you to make a pledge. Click on the link you received in your text, use your QR code on the envelope, or get your pen ready for the pledge forms. You'll notice that there are a few different options for you to choose from. The red button is for those of you who will become new Shelter for the Storm Society members. And I think I see some new society members out there this evening. As I mentioned earlier, this is a minimum commitment of $1,000 annually for five years. That's less than $84 a month. But please, don't limit yourself to that. If you have the capacity to do more, please do. Here's the impact you'll make. $1,000 annually will help a senior escape abuse, heal from trauma, and be safely housed. $10,000 a year for five years will provide shelter, life skills, counseling, and employment for five veterans struggling with homelessness. $25,000 per year will provide substance abuse, Treatment, mental health support, parenting skills, and life skills for five pregnant women escaping a life of abuse and addiction. The blue button is for current society members. And again, thank you so much for providing the, the annual support that Volunteers of America relies upon annually. And don't forget, if you make an additional gift tonight, Wells Fargo is going to match it. The green button is there for those of you who want to do it your way, and we do respect and encourage that. Please choose or create a gift amount that's right for you by clicking on the green button. Now, let's get ready to give. If you haven't yet, check your text messages. Use the envelope on your tables to make your gift. <laughs> At Volunteers of America, we welcome your contribution at any level. Any gift you make tonight will help meet the ever-increasing demand for essential services. And we know that there's so many worthy causes out there, so many needs. And we thank you for entrusting us with your generosity. I'll give you a few minutes to fill out the forms, and then I'll get back together with you. Thank you again for being here with us this evening. Please know, and I can say firsthand, 
that the kindness, your kindness is changing lives of Volunteers of America every day. The kindness of individuals like you changed my life and changed my wife's life and so many others just like us. You're helping break the cycles of poverty, addiction, and homelessness. And remember, no gift is too small. So on behalf of those who will find a way to Volunteers of America every day, again, I'd like to say thank you. Have a wonderful evening and please drive home safely. Thank you.